it's Lavender from the Beta Memorial Library, and I'm going to be reading two books on mermaids. Our first book is Sophia the First, The Floating Palace, written by Katherine Hapka and illustrated by Grace Lee. I'm Sophia, and I love being a princess. For our summer vacation, my family is visiting Meriway Cove on our boat. It's so big, it's more like a floating palace. Lately, I've been reading about mermaids. Maybe we'll see one at the cove. I hope so, but Dad says mermaids aren't real. My dad, King Roland, is usually right about most things, but he's wrong about mermaids. Because when I go onto the deck of our floating palace, there she is, a real, live mermaid. Help, the mermaid cries. Oh no, she's tangled in a net. Let me help you, I say. I pull her onto the boat and help untangle her. Thank you, she says. Her name is Una. She's really nice, but then she says she has to go. We're not supposed to spend time above the water, she explains. When Una gets in the water, she can't swim. Her fin is hurt. As I slide into the water to help her, my amulet glows, and I turn into a mermaid. I can't believe it, and neither can Una. How did you do that? Una asks. I tell her about my magical amulet. Una has a comb that's enchanted, too. I'm not sure what his powers are, says Una, but Mom says she'll tell me when I'm older. I help Una swim toward her home in the cove. We swim past a kelp forest, a cool sunken ship, and hundreds of beautiful fish. When we get near Una's home, I meet her friend, Sven the Seahorse, and her big sister, Cora. They use moon kelp to help heal Una's tail. Suddenly, the water goes dark. It's our floating palace stopping above us. Then we hear Una's mom calling her in Cora home. Una's mom is the Mermaid Queen. I'm so glad you're safe, she exclaims. A human vessel is in the cove and humans are dangerous. But I'm not dangerous and neither is my family. Queen Emmeline doesn't know that though. And she wants to use her magic trident to create a powerful storm. One that could blow the floating palace out of the cove or maybe even sink it. My family is on that ship. So I tell the queen I'm a human, and I can get the ship to leave. Please don't sink it, just give me a chance, I say. Luckily, the queen agrees to let me try. Una and Cora wish me luck. I start swimming back to the floating palace. Suddenly, I hear Una calling my name. Oh no, a horrible, hideous sea monster is chasing her. He wants her enchanted comb. I swim after them as fast as I can, but then they enter the kelp forest. Una, I cry. There's no answer. I rush back to tell Queen Emmeline what happened, and she tells me I have till sundown to rescue Una. The queen says if I can't, she'll sink the floating palace. I swim back to the floating palace. I need help, but my family doesn't believe in mermaids. So I gather some friends who do believe, Sven, Clover, and a seagull named Farley. Finally, we find Una. The sea monster has her trapped, and he's about to steal her enchanted comb. I try to stop him, but he's very powerful. He almost captures me, too. Oh no! Queen Emmeline is starting loud thunder over the cove. I need to rescue Una before her mom sinks my family's ship. I don't know what to do. Uh, your necklace is glowing, Sven tells me. When we dive underwater, Princess Ariel appears. My amulet brought her to help. So I tell Ariel about Una. I tried to save her, but... You need more help, Ariel says. She tells me that humans and mermaids both love their families, and if we just work together, now I know what to do. Sven and I find Cora and tell her about the sea monster. He's after Una's comb, I explain. The only way to save her is for us to work together. So Cora and I come up with a plan. Sven, Farley, and Clover help too. I have to sneak onto the boat where the sea monster has Una trapped. I get there just as he is about to cast a spell to grab Una's comb, but I snatch it right out of his hand. Give me the comb and I'll let your mermaid friend go, the sea monster says. What if I don't, I say. Then I'll cast a spell on you and make you disappear. I step in front of Una's cage, then I toss the comb overboard when Cora is waiting to catch it. No, you don't, the monster howls. He flicks his wand at me, but I jump out of the way. Instead of making me disappear, he makes Una's cage vanish. Una is free, but the sea monster is furious. He points his wand at us. 
You won't trick me again, he warns. Suddenly, Farley flies over the sea monster and drops Clover right on top of him. Then Farley swoops down and grabs his wand. Cora holds up the comb as it starts to glow. Waters rise at my command, she cries, and a spiral of water blasts the sea monster across the cove. We rush back to Queen Emily. Thank goodness you're safe, the queen cries. She raises her trident to stop the storm. Whew, now my family is safe too. Una's family and I go back to the floating palace. We can't wait for our two families to meet. Dad admits he never thought mermaids were real, but now he knows. I sit with Una and watch the sun set. She's a mermaid and I'm a human, but I know we'll be friends forever. The end. And our next story is The Mermaid by Jan Brett. Under the sea, an octopus family got ready for a swim before breakfast. Time to put on your new hat, baby, said Okasan. Baby did not like the floppy new hat. The hat was not happy either. As the octopus family set off behind their house, a little mermaid spotted their front door. Kinoro had been drifting in a warm current with her pufferfish friend. Take care, Puffy warned. You never know who may live there. But I'm so curious, she said. Kinoro sashayed toward the seashell house. Inside, breakfast had been set out. There was a great big shell, a middle-sized shell, and a little shell. Kinoro took a bite from the great big shell. Too crunchy, she said. The little mermaid tried the tender bites in the middle-sized shell. Too slimy, she said. Puffy could guess what was coming next. Kinaro sidled up to the little shell. In a minute, the tempting tidbit had disappeared. Just right, she said. All gone, said Puffy, as he wondered whose breakfast it really was. Kinaro floated around the seashell house and saw three chairs. There was a big chair, a middle-sized chair, and a little chair. She sat down on the large coral chair. Too many bumps, she said, as she smoothed her scales. Kinaro wriggled into the middle-sized chair, and down she went. This chair is too slippery, she gasped. The little chair was the prettiest of all, and Kinaro sat on it. Just right, she said. She gave her fins a flippery flip. All that wiggling broke the chair to bits. Kinaro was sorry about the pretty chair, but not for long, because in the next room she spotted three beds. She and Puffy had been swimming for hours and were ready for a nap. She swam over and settled in. What sweet dreams we'll have, she told her friend, as someone had been eating in that bed, and there were smashed shells and crab claws all around. This bed is too messy. She flopped down on the middle-sized bed. This bed is too squishy, she complained. As Kinaro patted her tiara, she spied the last small bed. It rocked like a cradle in the tide. She set her head down on the pillow star and fell sound asleep. Soon the octopus family returned over the sandy shoals. Right away, Otosan saw his breakfast shell overturned. Someone has been crunching on my crustaceans, he said, turning pink. Okasan huffed. My breakfast has been splashed. She turned pinkish, too. Baby looked around for her breakfast, but all she saw was the upside-down shell. Someone has been eating my breakfast, and there's nothing left for me, she cried. Otosan saw that his coral chair looked different. Someone has been sitting on my chair, he announced, now even redder. Okasan went from pink to red when she saw her chair. Who has been squashing my chair and scattering my teacup, she asked. Baby saw her beautiful chair all in pieces. The hermit crabs were taking it. My chair is going, going, gone, she cried. Sensing something else was amiss, Otosan squeezed into the bedroom. Someone has been sleeping in my bed. He blasted ocean water and kicked up the star-shaped sand. Puffy felt the ripples as Okasan jetted toward her bed. The soft seaweed she liked to drowse in was tangled and torn. 
Someone has been sleeping in my bed, she said. Baby octopus peeked inside her tiny bed. A beautiful mermaid was sleeping there. Someone has been sleeping in my bed, and here she is. The little mermaid opened her eyes and saw the adorable octopus. The baby's eyes were soft and sweet. Her skin was shell pink. Her graceful arms danced. But she was wearing the oddest hat the little mermaid had ever seen. Kinaro, who didn't like to see anyone unhappy, gasped. That will not do, she thought about her tiara. Just then, all three octopuses reached for Kinaro with their 24 arms. Puffy was ready. He puffed with all his might. Puffa puffa, pokety poke, stickety stick. The sharp prickles did not like the octopuses near the little mermaid. Kinaro, Puffy, and their new friend Ray floated away from the warm current. They couldn't stop smiling about the baby octopus. She looked radiant in her beautiful new tiara.